NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4000 series specs were supposedly leaked, and some data includes info surrounding a new cache system. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Recently, we talked about how a recent rumor suggested that Nvidia's next-gen GPUs could be some very power-hungry graphics cards. Well, now we've got some more leaks, but this time pertaining to GPU specifications, which will give us a rough idea of how much faster these next-gen cards will be over their predecessors. From what we previously know, apparently the next-gen RTX 4000 series GPUs from NVIDIA are going to be launching in September of this year, which will make it the two-year mark from the release of the RTX 3000 series. Q1 of 2022 is nearly over, so it won't be long until we start seeing more info pop up surrounding these next-gen GPUs. Computex 2022 will be held between May 24th to the 27th of this year, and it will finally be an in-person event, which is great considering many companies didn't even attend in the last two years, or had held their own virtual events. I'm sure this year with the return to in-person, the companies will want to put on a bigger show, and amongst them will be NVIDIA. So expect to probably see some official info surrounding Ada Lovelace or Hopper come out during this year's event. Now onto the leaks and rumors, this info comes from Harukaze on Twitter who is sourcing Copite7Kimi and Zeno Assassin on Twitter. He basically puts out all the specs they've listed into this nice little chart, comparing it against the previous generation. Both of those hardware leakers have posted info regarding next-gen chips, such as their total GPC, TPC, streaming multiprocessors, and this gives us a good idea on how many CUDA cores these next-gen GPUs such as the 8102 GPU will have. The 8102 GPU will have multiple high-end GPUs based on it, like an RTX 4090, 4080, 4080 Ti, just like how the GA102 GPU had cards yielded from it, like the 3080, 3080 Ti, and 3090. Essentially, when the chips are manufactured, some of them on the wafer come out defective, not fully though, so they can be salvaged and used for smaller GPUs. The RTX 3090 has 10,496 CUDA cores, which isn't even the total amount that the full fat GA102 die has. And Nvidia was supposed to release a 3090 Ti, they even showcased it at CES 2022, but who knows what even happened to that, but you've also got other GPUs like the 3080 and 3080 Ti. You'll have the same happen with 8102, 8103, 104, etc. The reason why I wanted to bring that up is because I know many people will take a look at this chart and start comparing the two and think, oh wow, 8102 will be 71% faster than GA102. But it's all theoretical based on the numbers here. Real world performance is almost never reflective of the differences you'll see here. I mean, just take a look at the teraflops on the RTX 2080 Ti and compare it with the 3090. The difference would suggest that the 3090 would be over 300% faster, but we all know the real figure was around 45-50% to faster on average, at least in gaming that is. The other thing we have to take into account is what kind of architectural improvements will Ada Lovelace bring to the table. Things like IPC, latency improvements, clock speeds, memory compression algorithms, performance per watt, and much more. And I'm hoping that the improvements in those categories is greater than what we saw with the previous generation, and that Ada Lovelace doesn't just turn out to be an Ampere on 5nm. Because when I saw these numbers, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really excited about what I was seeing here. NVIDIA will have to improve over the previous generation drastically considering what we've been hearing about Radeon's RDNA 3 GPUs with their MCM design. Now AMD's next gen GPUs and RDNA 3, that is a topic which deserves its own video, though from the rumors I've heard, AMD's next gen MCM design is supposed to be groundbreaking, kinda like what they did with Ryzen and they took the market by storm. Where we could possibly see Navi 33, which if we're to go by AMD's traditional naming schemes, is supposed to be a lower end to mid range GPU, and that small GPU will be as fast if not faster than a 6900 XT. Obviously you'll want your salt shakers here, but I'm going to be very much looking forward to what AMD brings to the market with RDNA 3 and MCM. But circling back to NVIDIA, it seems like another one of their strategies might be to implement a large cache system similarly to what AMD did with RDNA 2 and Infinity Cache. This information comes from video cards who are sourcing Copite and Xeno Assassin on Twitter, who data mined some info from NVIDIA's database. And, oh, if you weren't already aware, recently NVIDIA has gone through a cyber attack where hackers have gained access to pretty important files like the DLSS source code, so I won't be surprised 
surprised to see more leaks surfacing regarding future hardware. For these ADA GPUs, it looks like they'll have tremendously increased the amount of available L2 cache per 64-bit memory bus. Therefore, an 8102 GPU like an RTX 4080 might have 96 megabytes of cache Compared to that, the RTX 3080 only had a mere 5 megabytes of L2 cache. This move makes sense, as having to rely on AAVs for scaling up to a 512-bit memory bus would have made it very expensive for NVIDIA, and you can avoid that by just having larger onboard cache. We'll have to wait and see what kind of real-world benefits this can bring, latency improvements, and how advantageous it will be for Ada Lovelace in gaming, but it sure gives me hope that it will be more than just, you know, Ampere and 5 nanometers. But that will do it for this one. I just wanted to briefly talk about these rumors and leaks that surfaced recently. I'm sure over the next few months there will be more info coming out and I'll be keeping you guys posted and continue to give my thoughts on them. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.